Namo Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Cheva Narotamam Devim Saraswati Myasam Tato Jayam Udirayet Nashta Prayeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavate Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Neshtiki Oma Gyana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshur on Militam Yena Tasme Shri Guru Venamaha Sri Chaitanya Manobistam Stapitam Yena Brutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Uta Padakamalam Shri Guru Neshnamamscha Shri Rupam Sag Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Deva Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sati Devi Pranamami Haripriya Manchakalpa Tarubhyascha Kripasindu Bhaevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhaktivedanta Swami Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvese Shisha Shunyavadi Pashyatyadi Shatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadada Shri Vasadi Gauravakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so we continue reading from Srimad Bhagavata. We are on Canto 3, the, uh, Chapter 9, Text 33. Uh, Brahmaji is asking for benedictions from the Lord so that he doesn't get proud in doing his duty. So, Yadarahitam. Uh, and then the Lord is telling him how, how he can stay, become uh, always conscious of Krishna, we heard yesterday that how the wood is, uh, the fire is in the wood, or the fire is the same, although the wood looks different. So the human beings or the animals, plants, the bodies, we look different, but the soul within, the spirit soul is all the same. We are eternally parts and parcels of Krishna. So Krishna told Brahmaji that if you see in this way, you will Always remain humble. You will always remember me because you're connecting everything to me. So, yadarahitam atmanam bhutendriya gunashaye swarupena mayopetam pashyan swarajyam richati. When you are free from the conception of gross and subtle bodies and in your senses are free from all influences of the modes of material <coughs> You will realize your pure form in my association. At that time, you will be situated in pure consciousness. In the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, it is said that a person whose only desire is to render transcendental loving service to the Lord is a free person in any condition of material existence. So this is a pure devotee. Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu is the work by Srila Rupa Goswami. And uh, Srila Prabhupada compiled it as the nectar of devotion. And Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu speaks all about bhakti. So in that is mentioned a person whose only desire is to render transcendental loving service to the Lord is a person free in any condition of material existence. So we can see that means what is keeping us in this material condition. Here it said that this person, he's free from the material condition. Why? Because his desire is only to serve the Lord. 
engage in bhakti. So that means it's the desire which is keeping us here in the material condition. It's all our desires. You know, that's what's keeping us here. It's not that, oh God, you are not helping me, taking me out of here. No. We are desiring to be here. That's why we are here. That service attitude is the swarupa or real form of the living entity. So we can say, but I have so many desires and that's how I am. Why should I desire only to serve the Supreme Lord? But that is conditioned, that is artificial. That's the reason we are thinking we are the body. In our true form, a real form called swarup, swarup, rup form, swa, our own, our own real form is that we have this service attitude to the Lord that uh, my only desire is to please the Lord. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the Chaitanya Charitamrita also confirms this statement by declaring that the real spiritual form of the living entity is eternal servitorship to the Supreme Lord. So we have been re reading this repeatedly in this section of Bhagavatam because we are artificially trying to think that we are the controller, owner, master, master, proprietor. But our true uh, position is eternal servitorship to the Supreme Lord. Then till the time we do not have this attitude, then how will we get out of the material world? It means that we still have the desire that I should control, that I should control even God, you know. So that's the reason it's been repeatedly said. So, and, and that is the real spiritual form of the living entity. That's who we truly are, actually. This body is a covering and that we are thinking I'm controller, I'm enjoyer, I'm master, I'm this, I'm that. All that is artificial. We just have to get rid of all that. How do we get rid of all that? By engaging in bhakti. The Mayavada school shudders at the thought of a service attitude in the living entity, not knowing that in the transcendental world, the service of the Lord is based on transcendental love. So the, the particular uh, philosophers called the Mayavadi, what they say that, no, why shall I serve the Lord? I'm the Lord myself. But what is mentioned here is they do not know that what is this service based on? This based on transcendental love. It's only because there's a loving love between the Lord and his devotee. That's the reason the service exists. That's the reason the devotee always wants to serve the Lord and the Lord wants to serve the devotee because they love each other. They want to please each other. So that is a loving relationship. Transcendental loving service is never to be compared to the forced service of the material world. So we are always thinking service is not good because what is our experience is only material. You know, our ex experience is material. That, oh, service means exploitation. Service means unhappiness, force. In the material world, even if one is under the conception that he's no one's servant, he is still the servant of his senses under the dictation of the material modes. So even if we are thinking we are serving no one, why shall I serve anyone? Uh, why will I serve my parents or my children or my spouse or my country or community or my mentors? You know, then what are we doing? We are serving our senses. Factually, no one is master here in the material world. And therefore, the servants of the senses have a very bad experience of service attitude. So we are pretending to be the master. We are all, each of us is pretending that everybody should serve me. Everyone exists for my pleasure. Everyone should go according to my plan. This is my perfect plan. And everything should happen according to that plan. Everyone is thinking that, each and every one. And so that's the reason there are clashes. And they shudder at the thought of service because they have no knowledge of the transcendental position. In the transcendental loving service, the servitor is as free as the Lord. 
the Lord is Swarat, or fully independent, and the servant is also fully independent, or Swarat, in the spiritual atmosphere, because there is no forced service. Here, we don't want to serve, but we are forced to serve. And so that's the reason we think, oh, if I serve Krishna also, it will be the same thing. I'll be forced, I'll be unhappy, I don't want to do it. It seems such a sad, depressing situation. But we are not able to understand that it springs out of love, out of pure love. The spiritual world, the, the basis of all relationships is love, which we do not have uh, experience here in the material world. The slightest resemblance to love here in the spiritual world, Prabhupada would say, is the mother, what love she has for the child. You know, the mother whatever child will wake up at one o'clock, two o'clock, feeding, whatever, you know, she's doing it out of love. So, and that is just the slightest resemblance of love we see in the material world. But in the spiritual world, all the relationship is based on love. So, there, the transcendental loving service is due to a spontaneous love a reflected glimpse of such service is experienced in the service of the mother unto the son, the friend's service unto the friend, or the wife's service unto the husband. These reflections of service by friends, parents, or wives are not forced, but are due only to love. Here in this material world, however, the loving service is only a reflection the real service or service in Swaru is present in the transcendental world in association with the Lord. The, same, the very same service in transcendental love can be practiced in devotion here. So then again, another example is given as a wife is serving the husband is out of a love or friends are serving each other is out of love. And then again, it's mentioned that these loving relationships which we are seeing in this material world or experience, these are only reflections of love. It's only a reflection. The true in, the, in its purest form exists. The tu, tu, true love exists in the purest form in the, in the spiritual world. It's then the spiritual world. And that service is done in the swarup means we have a spiritual form. Each of us has a spiritual form. And that is our, our goal, to be situated in our relationship with the Lord in our spiritual form. Then no need to take any more birth, death, old age, disease. That's our final destination. That's what's said, go, go back home, back to Godhead. You know, when we are in a journey, we are on a journey, journey. First we enjoy it, but after some time we want to go back home. So this spiritual world is our home. Go back home, back to Godhead. Now it's said that the very same service in transcendental love can be practiced in devotion here. So we can begin that. It's not that we have to wait till we go back to the, uh, to the spiritual world to engage in Krishna's service. No, what we are doing, practicing, hearing, chanting, worshiping the deity, associating with the devotees, hearing from Srimad Bhagavatam, chanting the holy name, all this is devotional service. All this is devotional service. So this verse is also applicable to the jnani school. The enlightened jnani, when free from all material contaminations, namely the gross and subtle bodies, together with the senses of the material modes of nature, is placed in the supreme and is thus liberated from material bondage. The jnanis and the devotees are actually in agreement up to the point of liberation from material contamination. So even the jnani, what they are looking for? Liberation. They don't want to stay in this material world. So the jnani also wants to be free from the three modes of material nature, goodness, passion, and ignorance. They also want to give up their material body, gross and subtle, uh, gross and subtle body. So then it's mentioned here that the jnanis and devotees agree up to this point, that get liberated from this material 
world get liberated from this material condition. But whereas the jnanis remain pacified on the platform of simple understanding, the devotees develop further spiritual advancement in loving service. So the jnanis, they are just um, happy to be released from the material world. Okay, that I'm a spirit soul. Yeah, then the, they are happy with that position. Or oh, I'm a spirit soul. And so I'm sitting in the uh, Brahma Jyoti. But what do the devotees do? The devotees, they want to further develop, further in their spiritual advancement. They want to understand who they truly are. Okay, if I'm a soul, then what's my form? What's my duty? What's my activity? The devotees develop a spiritual individuality in their spontaneous service attitude, which is enhanced on and on up to the point of Madhurya Ras or transcendental loving service reciprocated between the lover and the beloved. So what the devotees want to do, they want to have a relationship with the Supreme Lord as individuals. We continue our individuality. Individuality is never lost. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, uh, fourth chapter to Arjuna. Never was there a time when you did not exist, nor me, nor I, any of these kings, and neither in the future shall any of us cease to be. You know? So, eternality is there. We are all eternal souls. But what a devotee wants to do is he wants to develop his loving relationship with Krishna, be situated in that relationship. And here is mentioned that the highest point of that relationship is Madhurya Ras, in the conjugal, in the conjugal mood, transcendental loving service reciprocated between the lover and the beloved. So we can do it if we want to. Depends how strong is our desire. Is that okay? Yeah. And we should do it. It's uh, this human form of life. We have been given this opportunity to get the highest goal. So we should take advantage of this human life because um, enjoying the senses, we can do it in other forms also. And as we are born as animals or birds or trees, there also we can enjoy our senses. But it's only in the human form of life can we actually engage in devotional service, try to understand, oh, I'm not this body. I'm a soul. I'm an eternal servant of Krishna. I have a relationship with him. So we should really, really take, um, take the process up seriously, take advantage of the, of the knowledge that we have been given. Apply, apply the knowledge. Okay. So... Let's go to 34. Nana karma vitane na praja bhavi six sis rikshataha natma va siddhati asmimste varishyan mad anugraha. Since you have desired to increase the population innumerably and expand your varieties of service, you shall never be deprived in this matter because. My causeless mercy upon you will always increase for all time. A pure devotee of the Lord, being cognizant of the facts of the particular time, object, and circumstances, always desires to expand the number of devotees of the Lord in various ways. Such expansions of transcendental service may appear to be material to the materialist, but factually they are expansions of the causeless mercy of the Lord towards the devotee. Plans for such activities may appear to be material activities, but they are different in potency, being engaged in the satisfaction of the transcendental senses of the Supreme. So Krishna is giving his all his blessings to Brahmaji because he's saying, yes, Brahma is enthusiastic to take up the service of creating the material world and changing, the, giving a chance to the conditioned souls to become devotees of the Lord, giving them that opportunity. So this is Brahma's devotional service. 
And so uh, a person who, who does not understand can just think, oh, it's just a material act. No, he's just creating the material nature. But why is he creating a material nature? Why? Because the Lord wants everyone to come back home, back to Godhead. And so Brahma is assisting in that. So this is devotional service. And so he's getting the mercy of Brahma. And then so it's mentioned that the, the devotees take on so many different services. And ordinary people might think, oh, it's just material activity. But the devotees are doing that so that everyone else can become a devotee. Others can also become a devotee. Singing, chanting, dancing, these Somebody can think that they are material activities, but when they're connected to Krishna, they're spiritual. They're spiritual and it, it brings all auspiciousness to everyone. It connects everyone to Krishna. Is that okay? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that's why the devotees of the Lord always have the mercy of the Lord. Vishim adyam na bhadnati papi yam stvam rajogunaha yan manomai nirbhaddam praja samsrajato apite. You are the original Rishi, and because your mind is always fixed on me, even though you will be engaged in generating various progeny, the vicious mode of passion will never encroach upon you. The same assurance is given to Brahma in the second canto, chapter 9, verse 36. Being so favored by the Lord, Brahma's schemes and plans are all infallible. If sometimes Brahma is seen to be bewildered, as in the 10th canto, he's bewildered by seeing the action of the internal potency. That is also for his further advancement in transcendental service. Arjuna is found to be similarly bewildered. All such bewilderment of the pure devotees of the Lord is specifically meant for their further advancement in knowledge of the Lord. So Krishna is telling him, okay, now you can perform your duty perfectly with your mind fixed on me. And you will not get proud. You will not start thinking you're the controller. So then uh, the what is mentioned again here, is that then how Brahma got the Brahma Vimohan Leela, how he got proud in the 10th canto. That is saying that that is um, for Brahma's own purification, you know, for his deeper realization, deeper realization. His, the material uh, creation, he's doing it perfectly. There's nothing wrong with that. How it's supposed to be, his plan, his schedules, everything is very, very perfect going on. But when he saw Krishna as a small baby, small boy enjoying with his friends, that's when he got bewildered. So that's for his uh, further realization. Further realization. And then Arjuna is found to be similarly bewildered. But what's that? So the devotee can increase the understanding of Krishna, can get a deeper, deeper knowledge of Krishna. Is that okay? Yeah. Chato ham bhavatatva adhya durvikyo apidehinam Although I am not easily knowable to the conditioned soul, you have known me today because you know that my personality is not constituted of anything material and specifically not of the five gross and three subtle elements. So here we can see the Lord himself is telling Brahma, that my body is not material. It's not made up of earth, water, air, fire, ether, mind, intelligence, and false ego. He's also saying that Krishna is not easy. Not, it's not easy to know Krishna at all. Very difficult for a conditioned soul. He, he's very difficult. Knowledge of the supreme absolute truth does not necessitate negation of the material manifestation. 
by understanding of spiritual existence as it is. To think that because material existence is realized in forms, therefore spiritual existence must be formless, is only a negative material conception of spirit. The real spiritual conception is that spiritual form is not material form. So because we have forms here in the material world, everything has a form, has a shape. So then some people say, oh, that means form means false. Form means maya. So spiritual world should be formless because they associate form with maya. But no, that's not the correct understanding. The correct understanding is this is material form. And then in the spiritual world, there is the spiritual form, eternal. It's eternal. So Brahma appreciated the eternal form of the Lord in that way. And the personality of Godhead approved of Brahma's spiritual conception. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna condemned the material conception of his body a conception that arises because he is apparently present like a man. So many people, they think that Krishna, because he came in a human-like form, that means he's also a human being. That right now, or maybe he is God, but right now he's in a human body. You know, but that's not the way to think. Krishna never ever has this human body. He has a transcendental form. He doesn't have a material body. The Lord may appear in any of his many, many spiritual forms, but he's not materially composed, nor has he any difference between body and self. That is the way of conceiving the spiritual form of the Lord. So he, right now we have experienced that we, the soul, are sitting inside this material body. So there is a difference between us and our body. So we are thinking Krishna is also like that. But no, Krishna is absolute. His form is eternal. That is himself. His form, that is himself. There is nothing inside of him. He's such an ananda. So same when we go to the material, spiritual world, we will also have a spiritual form. You know, over there, we will not have a material form. We will have a spiritual form. Is that okay? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Anything to add or comment? Yeah. So when Krishna comes in this material world, his body is still eternal. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's still eternal. It comes in his own true form, original true. form. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So we'll stop here for today. Yes. Yes. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai shla Prabhupad ki jai gaur Hari Hari Bol. Thank you so much for joining in today. Thank you.